I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. With an unexpected side effect of this coronavirus crisis, Asian Americans becoming targets of, of discrimination. Coronavirus have spread across the U.S. So have incidents of anti-Asian violence. They say violence. that hurtful and misleading language from our nation's leaders are now making things worse. Using this, because it comes say from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. There's different forms of racism, right? And like what we're seeing now is overt racism, where like we are very much like yellow peril and being blamed for something that had, you know, is not our fault at all. And like that has affected um, small businesses in Chinatown. And again, because of the racism, and like it might not have been super overt, people avoided Chinatown because they were like, oh, I'm gonna catch COVID, you know, in Chinatown because of all these Chinese folks. And like, you know, the funny part is like, we're also Southeast Asian, we're also Latinx. Our businesses took a hit mm -hmm. starting January mm -hmm. because of what was happening. And so again, like this just exacerbated a bunch of stuff that had already been happening. On April 5th in Brooklyn, detectives say this man poured some kind of acid on this Asian American woman as she tried to take out the garbage. Still no arrest. At the end of the day, like this is, it has always been about people fighting for what they need and it always will be. And I think that's what's so beautiful about CCD in the sense that we stay very grounded in that by working with tenants and elders who are very much understanding of we do need to fight and this is a constant battle um, for community control. When the pandemic hit, we were very aware that um, we were positioned as a grassroots organization to respond quickly and efficiently, right? And we we were conscious that we needed to step up to the the situation. Grassroots organizing is all about building relationships, and like we have, we make those calls. We like mm -hmm. constantly check in with our tenants to be like, hey, how you doing? What do you need? Mm -hmm. We know who lives in their household already. And so, yeah, we were like ready to go in terms of all that information and data and translating it into like real material goods and stuff. The fact that we don't have IHA market anymore in Chinatown, where, where it was the most, I mean, it was the last full service market that we have in Chinatown. So that's been like, I feel like a, a struggle for, or a challenge for the seniors and people who, to work with. We don't really see ourselves as like as like a direct service organization. We, it's very much like community building organization. Um, and so that was like the pivot that we had in the sense that like, while we were mindful of all these issues before, like we're really seeing that right now, like we have to directly serve and like provide food in a very material way. learn from the revolutionaries before us but like power concedes nothing without demand and so at the end of the day like we cannot continue to beg the government for scraps like we need to take what is ours and for sure like as a human being alive on this earth connected to the land to connected to like this world it is our birthright in many ways to be a part of it in a way that sustains us and not continuously dehumanizes us um, so I guess the best way to put it is just like you know we are doing revolutionary work and we just need to keep pushing because it's important to keep pushing for it. From last year on to my uh, 17 until now, oh. they all, you know, they all my, it's not just my friend, they all my like, the family. And I really appreciate what they do for us, to fight for us. I don't know what to say.
saying. Only word from my from me from all of my heart. Thank you so much. You know. We're just here to help, so I'm glad that you're able to do it.